Hi there, Spark fans. Rob Reynolds here, and today I want to talk about LEDs. Okay, kind of every day I want to talk about LEDs because LEDs are cool. They're a great, simple first circuit. Everybody uses them. Everybody loves them. If you go to any major city, any major tourist site, you're going to see thousands of guys hawking stuff with blinky LEDs on it because blinky LEDs are attractive. People like them. People show up, add them to your projects. It just makes it cooler. Now, this is an exhaustive subject. I could go on for eight hours and not scratch the surface of everything there is to know about LEDs. So I'm just going to go over the basics here. A lot of this is going to be stuff that most of you already know. You're going to be like, yeah, Rob, yes, we get it, we know. You may have other ways of doing things. You may have tips. We would love to hear from you. Uh, add them in the comments below. That would be great, because the more information we get, the happier we are. So let's start out simply. The easiest way to light up an LED is to take a battery. Take an LED and put them together. You get an LED that lights up. This isn't ideal. You should use a resistor, but we'll go into that a little bit later. But for simple circuits, you've just made one, a battery and an LED. These are great for what we like to call throwies. Take an LED and a battery, tape it together like this, then take a little magnet, tape that on, throw it at something metallic. You're making installation art. I saw one of these in New York City once. There's a giant cube sculpture in one of the parks and hundreds of people had shown up to throw LEDs at this thing, and it was amazing. It was, it was actually fascinating and beautiful. And they went back the next morning and, with brooms, took all the LEDs throwies back. So I thought that was extra cool. But let's get into it. Let's start uh, by looking at the ways we can power and control an LED. So as I said, controlling an LED can be fairly simple and straightforward. Take a battery, take an LED, and you've got light. Now, one thing to note with LEDs is that they are polarized, so they will only work one way. If you were to switch this around, reverse the pins, no light. Let's take a look at that. So here is your LED in a circuit. It's diode, give it a couple of arrows, and you're looking at an LED. You've got your power coming in here, ground on this side. So as long as power is flowing this way, you're going to get an LED illumination. If it's going the other way, you'll get nothing. We'll look at this further in a minute. Now ideally, you're going to want to look at the data sheet, figure out how much current you need and what kind of resistor you want with your LED. You're going to want a resistor with an LED generally. If it's something like this, your LED is going to outlast your battery if you're just throwing it up as a Gorilla Art installation. But for the most part in this circuit, you'll want to add a resistor to that. Another way to control your LEDs is with a simple circuit, like this. Here I'm just using a basic 555 timer circuit, transistor, a couple of resistors, a capacitor, and I'm blinking an LED. Just that easy. Now we can move on from there, and we can go to a small microcontroller. I've got the red stick here, Nothing spectacular, nothing fancy, and I've got addressable LEDs. I can control an entire run with them as long as I've got enough power going to the LEDs as well as the board. Now, microcontrollers can only output a certain amount of current on their pins. So usually you will have to bypass and send a power source to the LEDs as well as the microcontroller with a common ground between the two. Next, we've got a dedicated controller for LEDs. I'm using the Luma Drive here, and on its own, we can do a number of things. Got a potentiometer here that's just changing the speed at which it illuminates. And that's it. There are four simple ways, simple considerations to take one working with LEDs. Now let's look at brain power and see what it takes to make that happen with your LEDs. As far as computing power goes, it generally isn't going to be your concern. It may be a minor concern depending on your build, if you're using large matrices like this one. But for the most part, you'll be using LEDs as indicators or as something cool and flashy. And the computer power of whatever chip you decide to use will be enough. You'll probably base your build or your chip selection on your needs in that build. Uh, that being said, something like this, this is a 32 by 64 LED matrix, that takes a lot of computing power. So I'm running it currently off of an Arduino Mega. 
just barely enough power. You can still see the refresh rate. If we use something faster, we might get a little smoother of a plasma effect on that. So that's what we get with a Mega. And the instructions on this say definitely don't do it with an Uno. So I think the best idea is to do it with an Uno. And let's see what happens there. I'm gonna power this down. I'm gonna swap out the Mega. For an Uno with a shield that we made for just such an occasion. All right, whatever the word that means the opposite of spectacular is, that's probably what this is going to be. Powering up the Uno, and let's see what we get. Oh, oh, there's the thing. Oh, we got a little light there. So this is pretty much what's gonna happen if you don't have enough computing power. Now let's talk about wanting more LEDs than maybe you have pins for. We're gonna go back to our whiteboard. I'll just leave this less than exciting thing up so it's not a distraction. So as I mentioned, these are polarized. So power here, ground here, we get an illuminated LED. Reverse that and we get nothing. What if we want to add a second one? Let's put another diode right here. Make it an LED. Now we've got three pins. We'll call them one, two, and three. So what do we know? We know this one's high, this one's low, and this one is inactive. This is our circuit. This LED illuminates. Switch that over to here. This one's high, this one's low, this one's inactive. This is our circuits. Now we've got two LEDs from three pins. Good, but not great. Let's add a couple more. There's one. There's one. Now, we know if we put positive here, ground here, this is our circuit. What if we switch those around? Positive here, ground here. This does nothing, but this illuminates this LED. Same on this side. High here, low here. This is the path of our circuit. And we get this illuminated. And with three pin, now we've got four LEDs from three pins, which is cool, but we can take that a step further even. Let's go up here, let's add one here, and one here. Oops. Now we've got even more options. We've seen the first four options. We put high line here and our low line here with two inactive. This is the path of our circuit. We get a fifth LED. Switch those around. And we get a sixth LED, all from three pins. It's all nice on a whiteboard, but let's take a look at it close up in action. So for ease and simplicity, I've just got a nine volt battery. I've got resistors so I don't blow up my LEDs. So we go high on pin one here, low on pin two, we've got our first LED illuminated. Switch them over so pin two is high, pin three is low, and pin one is inactive. We get our second LED illuminated. Now as we know, we switch these around. Two goes high. Two goes high, get in there and one goes low, we get that one, and so on and so forth. Whoop. There's that one, we go out to one and three, we've got that, we reverse that for on one and three. And there we go, that's six LEDs from three inlines. So I've written a simple sketch to show this a little quicker without me having to do this and fumbling around and show you a couple other things too. Another interesting thing about controlling LEDs is 
that you can flash them incredibly quickly using PWM or pulse, modulation, pulse width modulation. In fact, you can flash them so quickly that the human eye can't in, even detect that they've gone off. So here we have all six LEDs from three pins. Added a potentiometer here so we can adjust the output rate. We can speed those up. We can slow those down. But if we speed them up fast enough, it looks like we're illuminating all six at once. You may be getting a little flicker on the video, but I swear from the human eye, these look like they're all on. Now let's talk about power. Power is probably going to be the primary concern of yours when adding LEDs into a circuit. Too little power, you won't get anything. Too much power, well, after about a third of a second, you won't get anything then either. So let's look at it. Most LEDs are going to want, especially LEDs like this, your standard 3 millimeter, 5 millimeter, even your 10 millimeter big ones, are going to want about 2 volts. Blue and ultraviolet or violet will probably want more than that. And at that voltage, you get a nice little light. If we were to turn that down, well, it just goes out. It doesn't dim like an AC outlet or an AC bulb. You're going to control its brightness with pulse width modulation. Now, what happens if we start to increase the power? We get up around three, it's gonna get ugly. Whoop, look at that, that quick, we lost it. It's going to fry. And that's why you need resistors in your LED circuit. Now, Turn that off. There are some LEDs, like this one, with a built-in resistor. I love these for prototyping. You don't have to worry about a resistor in your circuit. Pop it into your breadboard and you've got a light. And while we're talking about cool LEDs, there are also LEDs that will change color on their own. Slap it in the circuit, give it a little power. These make for exceptional throwies, just FYI. But I digress. We're talking about power and we're talking about resistors. Your data sheet is gonna be your best friend when adding these into a circuit. A data sheet is going to tell you things like forward voltage and current, or the amount of forward current it needs. Um, voltage may also be called voltage drop, same thing. It's gonna be two to 2.4 volts usually. And like I said, blue, violet, some others are gonna be a little bit more, maybe three to 3.2, something in that area but your data sheet will be your best friend and it will help you figure out, especially if you're using multiple LEDs in the circuit, what kind of current you need, what kind of resistors you need. There's some great websites. There's an LED wizard out there that we will link in the description that I use all the time if I'm using multiple LEDs from a single power source. It allows you to put your input power, the forward voltage of your LED, the forward current of your LED, and the number of LEDs in your circuit, and it will design your diagram or your, your circuit for you. Super helpful. Now, if you're just prototyping, you can go by rule of thumb. If you've got an LED, you can give it a 220 or a 330 ohm resistor, and you're gonna be fine working through prototyping. Once you get into the build of your actual circuit, you're gonna to wanna to be more specific than that. But rule of thumb, you can get away with that. I've got piles of 220s and 330s at my workstation for just such an occasion. Now, I know there are a million things I didn't even touch on when it comes to LEDs, but I wanted to keep this brief and just give an overview, an introduction to those who are starting out in electronics or LEDs and just want to get an idea of what they can do. If you want to dig more into this, you can look through our website. We've got tons of tutorials and projects like our portal or Angela's brilliant light up shoes. Those are amazing. I highly recommend taking a look at that. So grab some LEDs and start blinking the world. Have a great day and happy hacking.